crazy. Wow, Skynet is fascinating to me. Is it? Yeah, oh yeah. I think we're headed there, straight up. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the AI? Step up! <laughs> oh, we're not recording yet? Well, we are technically, but. Yeah, so they can use it. If, if, if they can just cut it in later. We don't have that technology. <laughs> oh, we don't? <laughs> no. Well, that's this what we need Skynet for. This isn't Skynet. <laughs> Welcome to In the Isles, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. I am your always late host, Derek Beery. I've got the fellers here from Grind Hard Plumbing Co. How's it going? It's going real good. I'm gonna going try good. this, yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's gonna work. Uh, yeah. Oh, I did, all right. We're here on a NASCAR track, it's a good place to be. Yeah, Texas In Motor Speedway, this is incredible. It'd be a better place to be if we were I know. Going around the racetrack <laughs> instead of sitting in the middle of it. We tried to pull it off, but all we've got is New Hollands, like combines and tractors. I think I we could have, like, you know, rented a limo and like, pod, you know, you're done this interview in the back of the limo while oh, doing, just doing laps. laps. We talked about that actually, because we got a hopped up Chrysler minivan. We're like, we should yeah, have done this just, whilst yeah. running laps. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe next time. Oh, yeah. So anyway, for those listening and watching, what is Grind Hard Plumbing Co? What do you guys do? What is it? Uh, well, you might be surprised that it's not plumbing. Okay. All right. <laughs> so sharp left. <laughs> yeah. We're a YouTube channel just building the weirdest stuff that we can think up, basically. Okay. Anything that goes fast and is bizarre. So where did the plumbing, is that like more like roll cage or piping? Is that like a play on that? Or? That's, a, that's yeah. a question for Edwin. That's um, some unique inspiration from my head. It basically means nothing. One of my friends had a grind hard tattoo. Yeah. So we're going to start a drift team called Grind Hard. Okay. And then I was like, if you just Google Grind Hard, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we decided to add the plumbing company because then it's like unique. And I thought it'd be funny to have a fleet of race cars that all said Grind Hard Plumbing Co. on them. I see where you're going. And now okay. for the first time, because then we started with like smaller go-kart and like dirt bike stuff. So we never really had that. Sure. But recently we've been building cars and big trucks and like we've got the stickers on the doors and full wraps and it's starting to turn into like my original dream of a fleet of crazy machines with nice. grind hard on it. Just nice. far just, from yeah. the original intention. Yeah, it's not drifting because we live in the middle of nowhere where there isn't even pavement. So it's more off-road vehicles than drift cars, but you know. It, there's it's a street sweeper behind me, wide open, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Oh yeah, yep. wide open. She's <laughs> holding he's, her wide. He's trying to. He waited a... to. He waited to start right until we started filming. He was yeah. waiting for us. You know what's interesting is there's not even an event for like another week. He's just like getting the hours in. Yeah. Yeah. Just gotta keep it going. Good for him. Yeah. I've always wanted to power break one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, okay, so let's get right to it. What is your favorite aisle in O'Reilly Auto Parts? You can only have one. It can't oh. be the warehouse. It's got to be storefront, tiled aisle. Mm. I mean, the one we spend a lot of time in is, you know, oil and stuff like yeah. that. Or just, you know. <laughs> well, you're on the outskirts. You're in the oils <laughs> and the filters. Okay. Well, yeah. a lot of the stuff we build is so obscure and, like, weird that, well, every time we go into O'Reilly, they're like, do I even want to know what vehicle you're putting the, these parts are for? I'm like, it doesn't matter. I just need to look at your pile of parts. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you explain, like, a quad turbo Predator and a Jeep Barbie thing on a custom frame. Yeah, it's right. It exactly. It's, okay. It doesn't it? But yeah. but favorite aisle? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Do you I have like a the different painting one? aisle? Paint, I was gonna oh, say yeah, the spray paint. paint. Like, even yeah. Normally I go there and I get brake clean and oil. But <laughs> what I, I do I like is it. every time I peruse the painting aisle, because like there's always these like cool Bondo things and this and that, and I don't know. That's like okay. the coolest aisle cool to look at. Yeah. yeah. Well, plus it's in some stores it's semi self helpish mm -hmm. aisle. So you yeah. get like all the weird accoutrements on the way to the yep. like, yeah. ooh, the springy thing. I'm gonna grab that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. you gotta love a good springy thing. Yeah. yeah. So how long have you been doing the YouTubes in a whole? Like is it did it start as a hobby or is it like you guys just went all in or like when did it yeah. start? More of the really? all in thing yeah. really. Really? Yeah. I've been posting every Friday since two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Wow. I Almost missed one when years. I was sick. But. We are on a very similar schedule. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that about I was gonna <laughs> yes. ask when you started? Every Friday. <laughs> yeah. About the same time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Friday at noon? No, no, no. I do late at night. Yeah. I, oh, do, okay. I do like six o'clock when folks are off work. Oh, kind of so too. like we're which the appetizer, zone, you're the main course. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> which uh, which time, what time zone are you? 
You're probably uh, Central. Central. Okay, yeah. that's yeah. we're on here now. Yeah. We're we're Pacific time, so okay, yeah. so it's a little bit different. Yeah. yeah, which is which. So that would be you know two p.m. your time. Whatever. The great thing about YouTube is no one knows how it works. Exactly. So <laughs> it's yeah. the best thing and you the just, worst thing. Yeah. About do it. whatever you want to do, and sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It's a tool. You can do whatever you want. You could post every single day, you could post every month, but it's like you can make it work any way oh, you yeah. want. Like for yeah. example, like our videos are like 15 minutes long, like highly edited, a lot of cameras. Your videos are like two hours long almost always, right? Yep. And like normally one camera. Yep, maybe. cell phone just ripping. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's, they both work. There's yep. so many ways to do it. Like you couldn't, no one could write a book on this is how you do YouTube. Because People you try. Can do it however you want. <laughs> uh, so obviously you guys are best friends that there ever were in the world, right? <laughs> so bring me back to the conversation. I, hopefully it was like sitting on a couch, eating a cold pizza, playing Sega Genesis or something. You're like, let's uh, you, do YouTubes. I took him snowmobiling. Yeah, I was okay. on a snowmobile trip. Yeah, we were out snowmobiling <laughs> in the middle of the mountains with his wife. They weren't married yet, but I think we talked about it a little bit throughout the day, you know, when we were snacking or whatever between riding the snowmobiles. And then uh, we got back to the cars and he was like, Hey, check out what I got in the back of the car. And it was the original Barbie car Mustang that we was our first project. And so that was that was where the conversation started is he had this crazy idea for a project and how to like kind of start a YouTube channel with a really unique, bizarre project. And then, you know, he was talking to me about like how to make that happen physically because I had, you know, welders and the ability to okay. you know, build stuff. So So he had kind of the foundation, you're like, I can Pour, I can yeah. I can pour fuel happen. on that, and we can yeah. do yeah. something. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I was literally in the back of my truck, and he was like, "Oh, this is gonna be fun because yeah. it's just you know a little pink Power Wheels Mustang kids toy." And then I brought it over to his house, and the first thing you do, he starts unbolting the engine out of his dirt bike, and I was like, "Oh no, no, we shouldn't, we shouldn't <laughs> ruin your dirt bike." He's like, "I haven't ridden it in a year. Let's just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's just tear he, it apart." <laughs> he also bought like a really, really, truly horrendous go kart off of. Was it yeah. Facebook Facebook Marketplace probably? Yep. Um, it was the worst car, go kart you can imagine. It had this old, like twin cylinder street bike engine that made absolutely zero horsepowers and weighed like 200 pounds and way yeah. too big for the Power Wheels <laughs> thing. And I was yeah. like, well, we can't just do like a Harbor Freight engine. That's just not exciting enough. I was like, I have this dirt bike and it's a perfect size, a little air cooled single cylinder. It makes like 20 ish horsepower, six speed transmission. It's like yeah. you know we can just take it out of my dirt bike. We can build this, have fun with it, and then we can put it back in the dirt bike. It never went back in the dirt bike. Yeah. <laughs> never dirt bike. went back in the dirt bike. We have used like every single piece of yeah. most of the dirt bikes we've sacrificed for their engines, yep. though. We've, wow. There's been a lot of dirt bikes on the chopping block. So you, ha block. you have a lot of frames just laying around. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we, we do. do. Well, the, the first one, we turned. I took the frame, and I turned it into a really weird, long scooter thing with a snowmobile engine from one of the snowmobiles we went riding with that day, an old Yamaha Phaser. It had a big platform, you stand on that, both feet side by side and hold the handlebars. And then the whole engine was behind you. So it was like eight feet long. It was, <laughs> we called it the murder scooter because, well, obvious reasons. Sure. <laughs> 70 horsepower and yeah. And it was. So, so how many projects do you guys currently have? And I know that's a hard question because there's in the back of your head, you're like, well, there's a lot that we want to do, but like, mm -hmm. Realistically, in the shop or coming soon, how many projects do you guys have on the plate? Well, I counted in my head last night, and this is counting everything that we've built that's still around. Everything that like is supposed to be running, there's something like 30 vehicles on my property right now that are all like past, present, or future projects. But like current projects that we're either like working on right now or coming up soon, more like, I don't know, three to five at any given time. That's a lot. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot to manage. We just, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like sometimes we're waiting for parts and then sometimes we're waiting for like the weather to change. Yeah. Like we started like a speedboat and then it was winter and then we had to finish it in like the summer when we could actually take it in the lake, you know? Sure. So there's things like that. The weather changes so quickly in Idaho. It's like, it's nice summer. We get excited about building a boat. And then by the time it's done, it's like we got to wait a year. Yeah, There's sure. a lot of things like that. Yeah. Or like we have our, our rotary trike, which took a Mazda rotary engine and transmission and then just built a trellis frame trike around it with an Audi A6 rear end. And anyway, that one's just sitting in the shed waiting to put a new engine in it because we have two feet of snow and it's not a snow machine. So. Sure, yeah, sure. And my shop's like 
barely bigger than this table, so <laughs> we only have room for one project at a time. Two yeah. if they're really small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously you build all these wild creations. We mm -hmm. were talking about maybe UTVs or ATVs or vehicles or whatever. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're based on parts from those things. Yeah. yeah. So what, like, what is your daily driver? What do you drive to and fro the mm. shop to work? And to Walmart and wherever? Yeah, I'm in between daily drivers right now. From the beginning, I've had a 2008 Dodge Ram 1500. When just, he says from the beginning, that's the first car he ever bought when he was 16. Yeah. Oh, wow. And like, so you're only, like fully yeah. committed. It's just now, like two days ago, probably officially dead. Yeah. Really? So, Transmission? No, it's just, it's some engine troubles that's overheating and like the whole coolant system needs to be redone. I think I lost like, my that's water. That's just Dodge. You just keep like, driving it. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah that's a, like, and I was driving it, but I could still, you know, I, I could drive it today. But uh, we have a um, total Tesla that we like lifted, put a roll cage on and all that. So I've been driving that around the last couple of days. Okay. Yeah. All right. What about you? Uh, daily driver. This time of year, I'm just driving my Tundra pickup. Um, but I also have a uh, 1991 Volkswagen Vanagon uh, full camper diesel uh, four-wheel drive camper van that I inherited from my grandmother. And okay. In the summer, I drive that some too, but I don't I don't like to drive in the winter because I don't want it to turn into a pile of rust. Sure. So I can't uh, remember. So you guys are from northern Idaho. Yep. I know Montana salts. What is Idaho's theory on, on we, winter? We used to not. We used to just be sand, and that was it that was for a beautiful. long time. It was so good. <laughs> yeah. I hate. I hate the. Yeah. Now they. Now they do. I don't think they use salt like granular salt. Yeah. They use some sort of chemical spray. The liquid. Whatever, the yeah. liquid. Whatever that one is. Which is even worse. Yeah, yeah, while it's, it's snowing, the road looks like this. Yeah, it's like, like it's crazy. Wet pavement. Yeah. It cannot be good for anything. Well, and then that <laughs> liquid gets up in the crevices oh, that the old yep. salt and stuff wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's wild. So do you guys do the YouTube thing full time now? Mm -hmm. okay. We've been we've been doing it full time for four and a half years or so. Oh wow! So yeah, since right. basically since the beginning. So you really did go hard, right? Out yeah. The, yeah. Gate. the just... first video went like really viral. We got lucky. Yeah. Like we're strategic about it. I guess we it was, we, we did yeah. it on purpose. But the the amount of success we got from that first video was pretty lucky. Okay. Yeah. Like, and then we just kind of kept going with other weird projects and. Yeah. So from like our first video to when we like, we're like, all right, no more other outside work. We're just going to do this was like six, four to six months from the first one to like. To wow. The, yeah. It took me two and a half years to get to that yeah. point. So what did you do before YouTube? I was doing some like commercial work and documentary work, just filming and editing, uh, heavy on the editing, like filming weddings and stuff like okay. that. So you were in the space already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was kind of like just bumming around really. Like I'd edit one wedding and have enough money to surf for a couple months and then like edit one documentary have enough money to surf for a couple months. He lived <laughs> in the back of aforementioned Dodge truck. He had a little, you know, camper yeah. or just a shell, oh, topper sweet. shell, and right. a little bed in there and stuff. Yeah. Okay. What did you do? Mostly construction right before. I mean, I've done all sorts of different things before that, but like at the time when we started the channel, I was just doing construction, but I was doing it self employed. I just would build sheds for neighbors. I like, I grew up on the, you know, road that I live on. I, I grew up there, so I knew all the neighbors, and they were all like, hey, can you fix my shed? Can you build me this? And, so I, I mean I'd also done framing like on a on a framing crew building houses and all of that but sure um, that's what I was doing and so both of us were self-employed when we started which is what gave us the freedom to do what we did because we could just like all right I'm gonna take a week and just do the you know YouTube stuff and then take a couple weeks make some money come back to the you know we kind of sure then, and then once it was once we were making even just a little bit of money we were like all right let's just it's like we've ramped up from here to here and this time let's just Go all in. Go all in. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting because there's a lot of duos or teams out there on YouTube, and it almost, I wouldn't say all the time, but like 86.397% of the time. It's a good round number. Yeah. One is like a hands on fabricator, builder kind of guy. The other one is usually like a IT or audio video or mm -hmm. techno, whatever, and they make like this super team. Yeah. They just it's, figure out how to have fun. Yeah. make it work and use their skills to the best of their ability. It seems like that's what you guys got going on. Right? Yeah. yeah, I think it's sure. a really good way to do it because sometimes when you're so in it, like so in the car process, it'd be hard to realize what is important for the actual video part of it because mm -hmm. a lot of times they're different. Yeah. Like to make a good video is very different than like building a good car. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you can do it hand in hand, but to make the best video, I think you need to make a few sacrifices on each end. Yeah, sure. like if we were both just 
really into the building part. Like those, there'll be a lot of times where, where, you know, he'll edit the video and I'll watch it and I'll be like, oh, but I said this about this thing. And I was like, like to me, it really matters because like in my head, I, like all the reasons of why I built it that way. But then like, he knows how to cut it down into something that people will watch and like stay entertained with and not just get bogged down in all the details. And that's like, that's what, you know, I think that's what one of the, one of the many things that's made this work for us is just okay. that, you know, different perspectives. We come to like a, a good, uh, all right. Product. So I've got a really important question to ask, and you can take some time <laughs> if you want. But what is the? How do I word this that doesn't scare you? <laughs> it takes a lot. <laughs> what is the most fashionable way that you've used zip ties? Where you're like, yes, mm, that worked. Way. It's amazing. Um. Not only did it work, but it's permanent, and I'm going to do that again in the future. Can, can I can I change it from zip ties to JB Weld? Because I have a way better story. For sure. JB Weld. <laughs> yeah. Like JB Weld happen. and electrical tape, way better yeah. story than zip ties. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what the Gambler 500 is? Absolutely. Yeah. Done it a few times. Off-road event. Yeah. You do yeah. a bunch of miles in a really crappy car. Whilst picking up trash. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we were doing that, and we had um, our BMW E36 pickup truck. That we one is one of our first projects. We just chopped the back off of it, put a roll cage, and that, and we took it to Gambler. Two years later, we wanted to take it back to Gambler, but we turboed it first. It was just a really cheap turbo kit, and so the oil line was too short, and it was like pulled tight against one of the headers. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, and so That's... it was a braided steel line, but of course the inside of it's still plastic. So after, you know, drifting around and dirt roads and rallying through the forest, it melted through and just started spewing oil everywhere. Um, and we were like 30 miles from anywhere in the middle of nowhere at this point. So uh, we had some JB Weld and some electrical tape. It's a you know, flexible oil line. So I mixed up a little bit of JB Weld, spread it on there nice and, it. My, nice and yeah. thick, massaged <laughs> it in, wrapped a layer of electrical tape around it while it was still, you know, gooey. And then did another layer of JB Weld, another layer of electrical tape. It I, held. Yeah. I think JB Weld is somewhat concrete so you're fine yeah. in that sense <laughs> yeah. no i just i just got the classic uh uh runs fine or ran when parked is ah, what it was on the face space yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> so i bought this rig went all the way up to the up to get it running opened the hood and immediately saw the side of the block smeared with jb weld oh that's <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. that's Always really what good you want. all right so here's a question that's tough because and i've said this before a lot of people don't realize on youtube's you can't just blast music in the background while you're working. Yep. Right. Yeah. It's like it's, it's a like struggle. a dead <laughs> silent, like whatever. But sometimes during time lapses or breaks mm -hmm. or whatever, you play music. So what is it you guys listen to when you're just jamming away on a project, trying to get something done? I mean, it's really all over the place. I mean, typically, like as far as the actual in the shop, if we're playing music, it's just me in the shop generally, because um, Edwin will be off you know, editing the video for, okay. for that week or whatever. But yeah, I listen to a fairly wide variety. Um, for working, I usually go with like um, rap, hip hop, metal, something like high energy. Like 88 beats a minute and up kind of deal. Sure, I don't know anything about actual okay. music, so yeah. I couldn't tell you anything about the beats, Well, I know but. you editing, because I've been in this world a long time, is headphones on, you got music playing. What mm -hmm. is it? Yeah, well, the, the main thing is, is editing the actual videos, I just, listen to the royalty-free websites so that I like can find new music I like. I'm laughing because you have no idea. It takes, what, 60, 70 songs before you're like, that's the yeah. one. And by then, you don't even want to listen yeah. anymore. I've listened to every single song on Artlist and Epidemic Sounds. It's like over 50,000 songs. I've listened to every single one. Yeah. Edwin used to also make music, and early on we were using a lot of his songs, some of his friends' songs. And there was one song that you wrote that we used a whole lot at the beginning. Oh, yeah. People love it. They'll be like, yeah, they'll comment every once in a while. They'll be like, bring back the, whatever the name of that song is. Yeah. Um, well, that's cool. Yeah. So people, yeah. people like that too. Yeah. So if I were to hand each of you a bag of Monopoly money and say, you can go buy your dream vehicle, car, truck, ATV, UTV, submarine, Ooh, whatever it yeah. is, <laughs> what is it and why? I'll start with you. This is actually kind of relatively cheap, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I've been really obsessed with this CBR 250 RR. Okay. It's a, a super bike, but it's only a 250, and they made it in the 80s in Japan, and it revs to 20,000 RPM. It's the highest revving production 
motorcycle you can buy. It's like just a little crotch rocket, but you could be going like 20,000 RPM through a school zone going like 15 miles an hour. It only has 40 <laughs> horsepower, but it sounds amazing. So yeah. And it's really, a four cylinder. So it sounds like a Hayabusa, but it's really it's not. It's itty bitty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it okay. revs like still six grand more than a Hayabusa. Or, well, so I mean, Hayabusa is like, only rev to like 10 and a half, 11. Yeah, so, so like almost, almost twice. twice what a Busa yeah, does. It's it's really cool bike. It looks just the retro 80s vibe is alive and well there. But a Ferrari F40, if money wasn't an option. Yeah. Well, he said Monopoly money, which is, you <laughs> yeah. know, so. That reminds me of the, that. What's that video game where you can, like, steal cars and light stuff on fire? Grand Theft Auto? Grand Theft. So there was a street bike in there that has that 80s, like, I don't know if it's a Yamaha or a Honda kind of look like. Probably unbranded if it's Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. yeah. It's but it's kind of like, it's kind it's of like the crotch rocket with the uh, dual headlights and the It's kind of like yeah. a cafe racer-ish yeah, looking bike. I'm like, man, that about. thing looks sweet. Uh -huh. I'd love to have something like that. Yeah. What about you? I'm typically not a person of favorites, um, but recently I found something that I really would would have as a car <laughs> if you know if money was was not an obstacle, and that's Travis Pastrana's new Gymkhana car, which is like an '80s Subaru wagon. Oh yes, a car that no one has ever cared about at all. Like when I started, <laughs> like my first car was a 1986 Subaru Brat. So like I started out as a Subaru fan. I don't own any Subarus right now. Um, and I'm fine with that, but that car that they built just for filming that, mm -hmm. it's it's just the most beautiful thing physically and then what it can do. Like, sure, I'd yeah. rather have that than like a Koenigsegg or a Bugatti. It's because like yeah. you can jump it, you can drift it, and it just, yeah. it's that 80s retro boxy and, box. And oh. the active arrow on the front fenders yeah, it's, sticks out like this high. Have you seen yep. this one? No. Oh, oh man, you it need is to watch the it. best it's, Gymkhana, it's yeah. insane. I did uh, roll one of those and hit a telephone pole when I was 16. I was a passenger. Yeah. Yeah. Not fun. But <laughs> it did run afterwards. Which hey. is incredible. I, I rolled a Subaru into a ditch and then drove it home. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. that's go. what they're made for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, this is something not a lot of, especially YouTubers, want to admit. I don't think I have ever had one because I'm not afraid to show failures like, hey, mm. it just. Doesn't go. Didn't didn't have whatever. It, yeah. Those are my favorite videos. The ones where something doesn't work and you show why. Yeah. yeah we yeah. we need, if something doesn't work, we show it. You know, I mean, good, if the whole good. if the whole project like completely failed, we might like wait until we can get it going again to make to finish the video. But like we'll always be like, yeah, this didn't work. Didn't work. Like, yeah. If I build something and it just breaks. Yeah. So what would you call your like biggest? I want well, not really failure, but it just didn't go the way you envisioned it going. Our <laughs> biggest failures are number one most commented thing that people remind us of every <laughs> oh, yeah. single it's day. It's always that way, yeah. We announced that we were gonna make this crazy like 400 horsepower electric tank thing. Like a little mini tank. And the, we didn't know much about like speed controllers and batteries and stuff. So we were like just basing it off of information that this guy was emailing us. He like sounded very legit and knew what he was talking about. We bought all these expensive parts that he told us to buy. He came over to our place and he was kind of a looney tune. And uh. like every statistic he gave us was incorrect. Like the batteries didn't work with the motor. It had nowhere near the power that it was supposed and it was all like to. way too big for what we were doing. We're yeah. like, why did you have us get a motor that's this big? to yeah. fit in a Power Wheels. Yeah. And so we made one video out of it and then couldn't finish it. Yeah. And then every single day, every single new video, yeah. every week, all the comments are, where's the electric tank? Because it would have been really special and intensely cool. Yeah. Are you ever going to go back? Are you going to revisit we it? We might. It's also just like, it's just so much work. And we've realized that our people, our audience is really like, as a whole, not into electric stuff. Which, I mean, from a watching people do things standpoint, I do kind of understand because it just doesn't have that same excitement of noise and, sure. you yeah. know, raw, like just the, the energy of, an, of a yeah. gasoline engine. Talks or, about doing a miniature diesel tank. Now, yeah, I we might just like really switch cool. gears yeah. a little bit and make it yeah. diesel or something like that. Yeah. My, uh, one of my sons, my young sons builds uh, weird go-karts and contraptions and stuff like that. And he's wanted to do a diesel engine, a turbo diesel engine mm -hmm. go-kart thing. And so mm. he started researching that and it's really cool. Yeah. To see when that comes a little, together. Little tiny turbo diesel yeah, stuff. Yeah. A little bit of smoke every now and then. Yeah. 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 yeah that'd be a lot of fun. Yep. Is there anything coming up project wise that you guys might want to get into or is in the works or might be coming soon? Yeah. yeah. We do want to set a world record okay. this year. What are you, in what? What are you yeah. doing? World's fastest snow bike. Snow bike. Okay. Yeah. Remember that's that mention of a Hayabusa? Okay. What's the track? 
Yes, uh -huh. we have we have a Hayabusa with a uh, track on it. Okay. We're, we're not quite. Fi it's almost finished, but. So is this like a whole like get Guinness World Records out there kind right. of Ideally, try? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I was DMing them on Instagram. <laughs> how, do, how does that work? Do you? Because I've seen some people where they just like film it. Yeah. And then they just submit it and say, here's the thing. Yeah. I think we, we honestly depends. don't know how it the works. The speed stuff, it seems like from what I've learned so far, they like send someone out and their own people. Like they can't just trust your data because you could say anything. And that's what know? I thought. Yeah. So even if you're like do it at a speedway, like their people need to be there with their to radar. It. And I think it's different. So if you're just a person without a social media, no celebrity involved, I think you need to pay them. I think it's like five to fifteen thousand depending on what, what you want to do to get smoke. them to come out <laughs> and record it right and then you get like a little plaque but oh that's an expensive we're plaque. pretty lucky because we're the social media people i think they'll come out for free with a photographer and put it in their book is, uh, is the goal like if we could get in the actual book have set the record because there isn't a current standing record uh set the record, be in the book, make a video about it, that would be the dream. Like, I feel like that would be a really cool goal for this year. So that's what we're I working mean, towards. That's how you get into Guinness World Records, is just do something really obscure. So you guys are working out of Northern Idaho, which we were talking earlier. I've done a lot of snowmobiling up there in that area. We have good uh, snowmobiling. Yeah, excellent. And then uh, uh, east border there over to Kalispell and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm familiar with the weather. It's a lot, it's not necessarily extremely cold, but it's consistent cold. It's heavy, wet snow. Yep. Um, it could turn to slush in a heartbeat and then rain and then all of a sudden snowing again and then it's just cold. Yep. So that's our winters. Yeah. What is the worst conditions you guys have worked in? You think like you're just like I got to get this video done. We're gonna yeah. just well, cold was one of them was pretty recent. Yeah, it was just <laughs> minus twenty. Like it was negative temperatures for a few days straight. Like high temperature of minus two, minus <sighs> minus ten, minus twenty at night, and just that for like a week. And my shop is insulated with one layer of cardboard boxes stapled to the wall. There's a big, I like it. you know, yeah, there's a big <laughs> wood stove that you know is that big, and we just pile wood in there all day. If you're standing farther away than I am from Edwin right now, cold. cold. Hold, hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not a fireman, but you said you... you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. You lined your building with cardboard. I didn't... Well, I just added a few it with pieces. Fire. The cardboard was already okay. there on most of it. But yes, you're, it's it's a fire hazard. All right. And the, the if you if you want to get really into the fire hazard, the chimney goes up through the wall. There's some metal there, so it's not like straight through the wood. And on the other side is the wood shed, and the wood's stacked all up next to the chimney, so. <sighs> keeps you on your toes, I guess. Yeah. You gotta yeah. work quickly, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> it keeps your toes from getting too cold. That's the, that's the biggest thing, though, is like, you can get the shop kind of warm if you're close to the stove, but the floor is just freezing all day. Your feet are just oh. cold. Oh. And it's not like frostbite cold, it's just like, it's just demotivating, just, I'm not comfortable all day cold. Yeah. So I grew up on uh, dirt and gravel floors my whole life until recently. And a lot of people would say, how come you never poured concrete or put anything in the shed when you're working on the tractors or farm equipment or whatever mm -hmm. else? And a lot of people don't understand that up north where you lived and where I lived, dirt and gravel is warmer than concrete mm. because concrete actually yeah, soaks just, it in. It holds yeah, the cold all day. Yeah, it stays all day. Yeah, yeah. And that lasts all yeah. the way till yeah. late spring. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. in the heat, we don't have any AC. There's there's nothing in there. It's, it's just a little greenhouse, basically. And so if it's 100 outside, it's yeah. really hot. Then you've got the welders and the grinders and yeah. you're wearing gloves and yeah. Luckily really we don't hot. get too many 100 degree days. It's yeah. pretty temperate in the summer. But Well, you guys are whippersnappers still, but wait till you get older. I mean, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna uh, need how, some, how old are you? Uh, I'm almost 40, I'm getting up I'm there. I'm 32, it's not that much different. Listen, go to Walmart, get some box fans. You know what we, I'm saying? We do have a box fan, oh, yeah. Oh, yep. We've melted a bunch of them because I put it right behind the wood stove <laughs> so it blows that hot air through the shop, but then we crank the wood stove way up and it just like melts the blades of the fan. Have you ever hung bags of ice with perforated holes off of your box fan? No, no. The, the cold is really more of an issue for us than the heat. Like yeah. it's a oh. much, like the heat is like two, three days out of the summer. The cold is all yeah. winter. I have so. heard about that though. We'll yeah. have to give it a go this summer Oof. if it gets hot. Man, I mean, it's good within like, 27 inches. <laughs> it doesn't do it doesn't very do much. Yeah, but if you need sense. a break, it can kind of just kind of hunker yeah. in. Woo. Well, we're hopefully building a new shop this spring. So by nice. next winter, we'll have insulation and good. 
Good in, for you in, guys. You know, better yeah. heating and all of that. Maybe so. even a lift if we're lucky. Yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're nice on the old back of later, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. So have you ever had a project where you got into it and you're like, so we talked about kind of kind of failures in a sense, but have you ever started a project where you're like, stop, this isn't going to work, abort, full leave, not going to do that? And I mean, the one that Edwin talked about yeah. was the main one. Okay. Um, there's been quite a few projects that we've started and I get like a couple days into it and I'm just like, why did I think this was possible? But those always turn out to be the best ones. Because I just <laughs> sit there and stare at it for two days find a way to do it and then it's like they turn out really you know like just yeah. so ridiculous like it's the ones you think you can't do that when you pull through and do it those are always the best um, well i think people watching others struggle gives, <laughs> gives them yeah. some sort of yeah, yeah there is something there yeah. yeah there's something to it but yeah we haven't really <laughs> aborted that many projects really no. i mean pretty we much the force tank it one. we've had really big problems that took months to work through and fix but we forced everything Most to work of. Yeah, some of them we've like mostly finished and then just kind of left it at that mostly finished stage because there wasn't really, it just turned out to be something that was like not that useful or like whatever, or the views dropped off and people were like not that interested anymore. But everything we've at least made it work, run and drive. Mostly finished is like my middle name. Yeah, <laughs> Derek, got, mostly finished. I have several <laughs> junkyards. It's like, I think I've got, well, the one property has 120, Plus cars. I thought I had a lot with like 30, jeez. <laughs> so you're like staring down these rows and you're like, what do I do now? And you can't compute. That's, like, yeah, like, so many. Well, I got to pull that transmission. That needs an engine. That rear end's gone. That needs frame yeah. swap. This, so you're like, Are I, some of them just parts cars or are they all intended to be something someday? They're all, they're all channel cars. So they're all yeah. intended to be, they have already been revived and then parked mm -hmm. or they're ready to be, ready to be on the channel but need I, extensive work. Have you ever sold one? Oh yeah, we sell like 30, 40 a year because it's oh, okay. always a revolving yeah. yeah. Door. I think that's I think that's something that a lot of people who watch don't necessarily like fully comprehend is how many pro cuz we do projects like I mean sometimes you do a bunch of videos on one, but like there's just so many projects. It's it's like like most people who do projects just for fun, you have a a project car. Like maybe you have five project cars, whatever it is. But like you just spend a whole bunch of time on the one project. Right. Mm -hmm. With when you're doing it for entertainment, like it's a new one all of the time, and then they right. just keep piling up. And like yeah, sometimes you can sell them, sometimes yep. you can't. But like just so many projects. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. I mean, you're bolting on part to vehicle A while looking at vehicle B in the background, while thinking about the parts you need to order for vehicle exactly. C, and then planning on D. Yep. Yeah, all at, all the, same at the same time, time. Yeah. all the time, yeah. Yeah, and it's just that revolving door, yep. but... It's fun, though, too. It is, I mean, we're blessed to play with cars and... Yeah. Oh, yeah, and you always have something to do while you're waiting for parts or Exactly. Or that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're like, okay, well, I've got yeah. the parts for this one, let's go on this one. Yeah. Speaking of cars, what was your first car, your first automobile? Yeah. That was the Dodge Ram. The Dodge? Yep. So you never had, like, your parents never said, here's a K car, get to school, nope. or anything like that? No. Nope. Okay. Just went straight for it, and wow. then it kept me going until just now. So you you probably mortgaged it then, right? Yeah. You, you, wow. I just have no idea what to do now, though, because I'm not too excited about new trucks. I Hellcat don't know. swap. Duh. <laughs> in the, just, no, it's, obviously. it's not worth it. <laughs> yes, it's, it's not. Uh, <laughs> it's falling apart in every single way. So make it like a make it like a shop truck. Put a flatbed on it, a welder, a generator, a, a couple of fuel it's cans. It's the worst truck I've ever driven. <laughs> oh. It's actually it's terrible. I don't know what it is about that generation of Dodge, Dodge but I don't, it's just not great. They didn't I didn't know because it's the only truck I really drove. But it is a six speed, so that's cool. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rose some gears. Six speed manual, yeah. Yeah. What about yours? First ever vehicle. Uh, well, that's kind of a, there's like a, there's, there's, there's two answers to that. First official vehicle that I could drive on the road was a 1986 Subaru Brat. Um, oh, Brat. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I loved that thing. It was, I, I jumped it. I went and got it stuck in the mud and drove up mountains in the snow. That thing was amazing. But before that, when I was like 14, 13, maybe on a relative's property, that was an old 86. Seven, I want to say, a Suzu Pup oh, yeah. truck. Yeah, 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 not the yeah. diesel, unfortunately. Um, but he just was like, here, you can have it. Go get it, get it running, whatever. So I hotwired it. Hotwired nice. my first ever truck. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just drove it around. We live up in the middle of nowhere on dirt road, private road and stuff. So I'd drive it up and down the mountain. I was working for neighbors, you know, mowing lawns and cutting firewood and stuff like that. So 
I drove that around for like a year or two before I got the super, before I even had a license. Okay. Um, but I never had the title for it, so uh, I eventually actually just drove it right back to the property where I got it from and left it. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> With the instructions, touch these two yeah. wires together. <laughs> I think fun. I eventually got a junkyard um, ignition with a key and or, you know wired that back in. But. Awesome. So we're all here along with other folks at you know this huge O'Reilly conference in Dallas Fort Worth. Did you guys bring toys to put on display up here? We we brought one that we made specially for O'Reilly. Okay, is that the replica yeah. minivan thing? Mm -hmm. The little fiberglass uh, Chevy van with the yeah. Tell me about this thing. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't been to the convention center. Yeah. What what is this thing? Well, it's pretty hard to find. They seem to be pretty rare compared to like most go-karts you put in the name of it and you can find one on marketplace or wherever like in each state but this one we had to kind of pull our audience for it to even see if someone had one that just laying around their garage and we got lucky but it's just a old classic van body fiberglass okay it's kind of just sitting on like a metal frame and this one had a unused never started predator engine that just came right with it it almost nice. had all the parts ready to go yeah even had some upgraded steering that was pretty cool yeah. And um, yeah, it so didn't we, work we just, at the time, but yeah. the body was messed up and broken. But finish it off? Did you did, wrap yeah. it or paint just, it? Yeah, or? we did some fiberglass work, sanded it all down, and then got it wrapped um, in the time frame that we had. The wrapping was really the only yeah. option. You know, cleaned up the frame, repainted it, welded some stuff, fixed some stuff. You know, got the engine yeah. going and nice. got some new wheels and tires yeah. to match the original look because yeah. they had this van as they had three of them as like promotional stuff that O'Reilly did a long time ago. And then just over the years, they lost them all. Or got destroyed because <laughs> that fiberglass is pretty fragile. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, so yeah, we, we had just this one poor quality reference image that we were basing all of our decisions on. Yeah. But it ended up looking like in the, in the hall, there's pictures of it right behind it. It looks just, just like it. Perfect. Yeah. It's really cool. That's awesome. I'm looking yeah. forward to and seeing it. It came with a little tiny drag chute Really? Yeah. And we tried to get it working, but the spring is all done and it doesn't really go fast enough to really to parachute. Oh, to get it parachute. out there. Yeah. So we bombed down the driveway in the ice and I was holding onto the back of it and I jumped up and threw it in the air and it actually like expanded the chute, which was cool. Yeah. And uh, so we still have that. I was thinking. We have to uh, put it on something. We'll CO2. Put it on something. You got to use CO2. Yeah. Little uh, tiny bottle. And uh, we uh, didn't have time for that. Yeah, <laughs> go back and see how to that thing. That'd be uh -huh. awesome. Yeah, Here's great. an important question that a lot of your fans are going to want to know. They're probably going to write this one down. So oh, just, shoot. Yeah. The pressure's on. What is the most ridiculous hack you've ever done and you finished and you were like, whoa, that actually worked? And you're almost like scared to say that it worked or admit it worked because people might mm. replicate it or duplicate it? Like a shortcut? Yeah, or, sh or like, just like using something that shouldn't like, be used for like vice grips as a steering wheel. Or, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Mm, or okay. rope as a chain. Or yes. that's a good. Yeah, you know. I mean, mm. or do you try to avoid that? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I mean I, I use like uh, everything I build is like I use like bits and pieces of other things in the scrap pile to make new things. Like recently, I built uh, four custom wheel adapter spacers that go from a unimog six bolt pattern which is like six bolt on two and 205 millimeters to like a standard six on five and a half bolt pattern using hubs off of a two and a half ton rockwell axle that we'd put different hubs on and i just took those hubs and machined them down and turned them into wheel adapters for something else i mean i don't know if that counts as a hack that's just using it worked scraps that you have yeah, but like man. that's the point is that's like everything i build is just i just go like okay what i have what i have here because i don't want to go to town so we've talked a lot about different builds like ones we would maybe pause on and things of that nature but what is the most like let's say you guys shuttered up today and tomorrow mm. you're selling hot tubs I, I don't know. Whatever. Selling hot tubs. That yeah. sounds nice. Sure. Right? That sounds chill. Yeah. <laughs> so what What is like, you would reflect and say, this is the one build that I think kind of resonated with our audience the most or that we're most proud of or like represents our company. Mm. What is that one build where you're like, man, that is like the crown jewel of the channel? That's, that's an easy question. Um, it's one of the Power Wheels builds because that's that's like what we've become known for and we've done a lot of them. The one we just finished is a really, really close second 
to the to the previous one. Um, we call it Colonel Senders because it originally was kind of a greenish colored like Power Wheels Jeep body. We put a different body on it later, but it's a Power Wheels Jeep, just not Barbie Jeep. And we put a hundred horsepower uh, KTM V twin thousand cc motorcycle engine in it, four wheel drive, power steering, like really reverse. good independent suspension, reverse, added all that stuff. And I mean, I I put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours into like custom building every the whole the entire chassis is custom built i may top that build but I, I honestly don't know if i ever will like it was just so perfect in so many ways and just driving it it's hard to describe how well it works like it's a whole bunch of parts into a tiny little space that should be miserable to drive and it's just fantastic like the weight balance is perfect i've jumped it like 50 feet just massive jumps that are built for mega trucks, like huge, yeah. you know, trucks with tires this tall. Jumps yeah. built for that. I took it around that course, just, rah, yeah. you know, 50 yeah. foot tabletops, just clearing them. For so, me, it's different because Ethan has so many hours yeah, into that right. and like, it's such a thing. But what I'm really proud of as far as like our YouTube channel is, we have this uh, series where we took a gambler car oh. and it didn't really work out right. And so we were up all night. It, it, everything went wrong. Yeah. Not, it didn't really, like, it went very yeah. wrong. Like, you couldn't have scripted a movie better. And just, like, the way that we filmed it and the way that, like, it came out in the edit. Like, it's one of our longer videos. And it is just a dramatic masterpiece of redneckery. Like, it's oh. beautiful. That one, I was thinking about that, too, is that that yeah. one's... Yeah, the end result vehicle, not all that proud of, but the whole experience, yeah, it was just so good. the video we got at good. the end of the day, like, and just the, there's so many people involved with it, it was so much fun to do. It's like, for me, it's such a good memory, and if I had to link one people, like, oh, like, what do you do? You know, I'd send them that video even still and be like, hey, this is, this is, I yeah. guess, what we do or what we've accomplished, you know, now that it's over and we're selling hot tubs. <laughs> like, yeah, this video is no, one that you one's, to look at. Well, and the really cool part about that is then uh, it was a V12, it was a Jaguar with a V12 in it, and that we turned that, or I turned that engine into a table that we use for our pod. Well, it's my kitchen table as well, but we pull it out for our podcasts. Mm -hmm. So I cast it all into epoxy and immortalized yeah. that pile of crap yeah. Jaguar engine into this amazing <laughs> table. Yeah. But in the video specifically, it was a fuel injected vehicle. And that just the something with the wiring just it was wasn't the, working. The it had two separate computers. It had an ignition computer and a fuel injection computer. And the fuel injection computer just gave up on life five minutes after we yeah. bought the car. Yeah. So it was a whole thing of turning it into a carbureted V11. Is yeah. what it ended <laughs> One of the cylinders was dead. We <laughs> built we built a steel <laughs> intake manifold to put a Edelbrock carburetor for a Chevy 350 on top of a V12 Jag overnight. I stayed mm. up with our, our friend Mike. We just, he and I just drank an energy drink and stayed up all night, built this crazy steel intake manifold that stuck out a foot out of the hood. It was like, it yeah. looks like it should be super fast and it was just the slowest, yeah. most miserable thing ever. And it was amazing. <laughs> Have you guys ever had any time sensitive projects? Like, oh shit, you know, yeah. <laughs> gotta get this done. That was one of them. Four days or whatever. Mm -hmm. What's the most recent one? Uh, the most recent one was the, uh, the crazy giant Bronco we built. It was a 79 Ford Bronco. Uh, Weston Champlin put a uh, twin turbo or compound turbo Cummins 12 valve in it and um, then shipped it to us. And we put two and a half ton Rockwell military axles and 12 inch coilover shocks and 43 inch tires under it in 11 days. Oh my goodness. So we took it from <laughs> in, in my driveway. We don't have a lift. It would physically not fit in my shop before yeah. or after we worked on it. And so we put it up on metal sawhorses in my driveway and just worked. Yeah. And welded the frame to them. Yeah, welded so the frame to the sawhorses so it wouldn't fall on me. <laughs> sure. And yeah, we did that whole whole build in 11 days. That was that was the biggest time crunch we've, we've ever yeah. done as far as building. We were literally driving it onto the trailer at like two in the morning to drive to the film shoot that had been- in, On the Rubicon. A, a date and, set, yeah. so. How yeah. do you handle that stress? Do you like it, hate it, don't care, indifferent? That, I I think we don't do it that often. So when we do do it, I really enjoy it. Yeah. Like it getting a gambler pressure. car ready yep. for gambler, you know, we have that date that it has to be done, staying up all night, like hanging out. Like, cause normally when we film during the day, we really do kind of film like, and work nine to five. So at least we try to. It helps with the sanity. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but I don't know, It's I, there's like this camaraderie that mm -hmm. is, 
comes out of that. Because, like, on the regular day-to-day, it's like, you know, but, like, this kind of we're in this together. Like, even if you're not working on something at the time, you're still there entertaining the people who are doing the thing. Like, it's... It's really, like, fundamental to car culture, I think, is, like, this idea of just a bunch of dudes... Bunch of friends, really. It doesn't have to be dudes. <laughs> bunch of friends. <laughs> Ideally just, not. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of friends just hanging out in a shop just, like, with this common goal of making this vehicle work. And, like, it's in all of the, like, movies we watched as kids, the shows. It's There's always this, like, pressure to get it done in time. And something about that, like, yeah, I, I could not do that every day. I would, you know, just... It would be too much. But every once in a while, that just is like, I don't know, that's really kind of what it's all about in a way. It's like that feeling of just like, we got to do whatever it takes to get it done. We're in this together. Like, and you bring in friends to help get it done. It's it's all about the community and the, you know. And those will be the days we remember, like at the end of our career. Exactly. Absolutely. Those will be the days where we're like, that was awesome. When we stayed up till four in the morning carburating the Jag. Exactly. (laughs) Oh yeah, dude, Mike and I will probably, Mike's old enough to be my dad almost, but he and I will have like a bond for all of time over that experience of like, we worked until 5.30 in the morning and we turned the key and it ran. Like it just started right up and ran, and we were just like, oh, Thank and goodness. then went to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've fallen asleep under a car many a times with a cold piece of pizza on my chest. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's actually some of the best sleep I've gotten. Yeah, something yeah. about concrete. You'll have that on the bigger jobs. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, we're gonna move into a segment called ASAP Olators. Now this is mm-hmm. yeah, all right. What the heck is that? I'll explain. All right now, <laughs> so. I'm going to ask you a question. The goal here is to answer as fast as humanly possible. Oh, no. So here's how I think this is going to have to go. I'll ask you one. I'll come back to you. We'll kind of, we'll do this. And then we'll see what comes out of this. You got to go as quick as possible. Okay. I'm not good with that, but we'll try. Or I don't know what the ramification is. We don't have. Oh, shoot. I don't know where the producer went. Maybe you get fired or something. I don't know. (laughs) Drop and give me 20. I don't know. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. I'm ready. You sure? I am. I have like really dramatic light on me right now. Too. All right, this is that's good. good. Perfect. <laughs> what is your favorite decade of automobile? Now. Now? Now. What? I've never heard that. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> that's like easy, fast, awesome. Technology? Like think of the, the AMG GTR. It's what is like that? It's like the coolest car. <laughs> Mercedes. Yeah. Oh, Mercedes, Mercedes AMG, AMG GTR rear steer, super okay. fast, sounds amazing. All right. Like, yeah. All right. So if you I can tell ha- by the answer that Edwin isn't the one who does most of the work on the cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, but you appreciate technology no, yeah. and the here and now yeah. and advancements. Yeah, and, and like think of just the, the active suspension on the new McLarens. Sure. Absolutely incredible. I like, have that on mine too. It's just called heated springs. <laughs> so when you go down the road, they kind of just, they adapt, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good answer. I've never, I've never heard that. Bottom okay. Point. What is your favorite in the world, on repeat, no exceptions, car movie? Oh, geez. 24 hours a day. Can't turn it off. I told you I'm not good at these rapid fire questions and I'm not a person of favorites. We're already uh, a minute car in. movie. I need oh. like a soundboard, like the Jeopardy. Yeah, like, I uh, like, like my you give me the time pressure and my brain just shuts off. It was uh, really good was Ford versus Ferrari. Oh, that was yep. Good. Absolutely. 100%. Thank you for answering Rush. that for me. I just couldn't think of it. Rush was all, uh Does it Is that the one See, where he held the I'm board not good out at favorites. that says uh 8,000 RPMs go faster or something? Yeah, yeah that uh-huh. was, that's Ford versus Ferrari, yeah. 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 I almost I, I almost like cried at the end of that movie. So, really yeah, I'd, 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 go, I'd say Ford versus Ferrari, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Question for you. This is a tough one. Conventional or synthetic oil? Go. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I think that, honestly, at this point, even the more conventional style oils are pretty synthetic. Yeah, I would, I mean... <laughs> Here, and here, and here. my truck has so many miles on it, I just use synthetic. This is a <laughs> this is one of my favorite questions. Okay. I, I get probably fifteen to eighteen hundred emails a day of just like tech questions. Like really? help me this, help me that, how do I do this? How do I a bulk of it is like I've got a nineteen fifty-four Ford car, what oil filter and oil do I use? And the response is always any oil today 
is better than the oil produced in 1954. Yeah, you yeah. can buy the cheapest <laughs> whatever oil you from want. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter. Like yeah, just that's use true. an oil. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, people get so into the oil debates. Oh, like, yeah. That's a that's a question you do not want to ask on the internet. Yeah. Whenever I ask Ethan if he's working on something, because I'm normally editing at home and then I bring stuff. Because I a lot of shops out of nowhere. Yeah. Auto parts. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Ramming up to Ethan's house, and he's like, he's like, oh, I need oil for the Bronco, and I'm like, okay, what? Wait, he's like, whatever they got. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, like, just bring me if oil. it's in this ballpark, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just bring like, me oil. As long as it has capacity. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than not having oil. Yeah, uh, yep. for sure. No, I always joke with people like asking a car guy conventional versus synthetic is almost like, and we won't, but it's almost like talking politics. Mm. Like you really <laughs> right. can get down yep. that, yeah. that alley. Okay. Next question. Ooh, this might contradict what he ah, said okay. here. What is your favorite car maker right now? I think I'd have to go with Toyota. Really? For for just daily driver, I mean, like excitement. No, if if it's about like <laughs> what's exciting, tone exeg. But that's like not. I'm never gonna even see one in real life, probably. So, <laughs> like, there's a tough one. What is one vehicle if if it were to drive down pit lane right now at Texas Speedway, mm -hmm. and I'd say, here's the keys and the title, and you would go, nope, I ain't taking that. Nissan Juke. <laughs> Juke? What is that? <laughs> Google it and you see Google. Your, well, we, we need your reaction, right? Yeah, now. we do. We do need your reaction, actually. Nissan. You should be able to take off your sunglasses. Like Jukebox? J -U -K -E. Yeah, J U K E. Nissan Juke. Or oh, no. Yeah, see? <laughs> Honestly, I could just keep going. Nissan Juke, Nissan Cube, Pontiac Aztec, Pontiac. Uh, uh, the Why? PT Cruiser or Chrysler PT Cruiser. They made this since 2015? Yeah. yeah. It looks like a melted Volkswagen with a hatch or yeah. something. <laughs> with like two sets of headlights on top of each other. It's 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 like a newer version of the Pontiac Aztec. Like oh. we have had that as the worst. Yeah. Aztecs are yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. They're they're horrendous. And they, but but like the thing is, in this country, we don't even come close. Some of the Renaults and stuff in Europe. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, what is it called? It's a Renault. <laughs> oh gosh, there are some unbelievably horrendous okay. cars in Europe that are way worse than anything we have in this country. Like, <laughs> it's the oh my God. taste, baby. <laughs> no, I mean like I like foreign cars. They just have. Oh, there's one. I can't remember what it's called, but it is so I know bad. Or maybe it's a Peugeot. About. It's yeah. either Renault or Peugeot, and it's it's rough. Misery. <laughs> this one is going to be an interesting question because. Mm. It sounds like you're more of the fabricator, you're more of the... I mean, you guys obviously do a yeah. little bit of both, but you spend more time maybe editing, is that true? Yeah, editing yeah. Video? definitely okay. most of the time. Yeah. Okay. So what is your most used tool? Outside of a camera? I mean, if it was a rapid fire, I, it's, I'd it's just say open. that camera right there. Well, okay. I mean, to be fair though, Steven is mostly behind the camera now, so you yeah. probably spend more time on your It'd you know, be your PC keyboard. probably, right? Yeah, but actually, a cordless drill. Yeah. Because I use it when I'm working on my dirt bikes, and I use it when I'm working on my house. Last rapid fire, and this could also get a little bit controversial. Mm. After a long, hard day, so you're putting in one of those 14, 15 yep. hour, your welder burned, you're tired, your knees are aching, you got 14 cuts, you're bleeding from your eye for some reason. Yeah, that happens. You're starving. What is your go-to meal? Burger. Burger? Burger and fries. Just anywhere burger and no, fries? No, no, no. A really good burger from... <laughs> like home cooked? Yeah, like, well, yeah, I mean, if I had the time or energy to home cook, but like, there's a, there's a brewery in town called McDuff's and they... It's not even the best burger anywhere. It's a really good burger, but it's, I mean, I've had better, but like, I don't know, for me, it's just like, they have they have these gargonzola fries. They're like a waffle cut fry, which just okay. piles of gargonzola fries cheese. fries are next level. Oh, just <laughs> that, the whole, it's really the combination. You go to McDuff's. It's the whole kit. Yeah, yeah, you get a really juicy burger, a huge stack of fries with cheese all over them, and a really nice craft brewed beverage. Yeah. Whenever Dude, we go so out good. in town, it's hard to convince them to go anywhere else. Yeah, wow. it is. You know what irks me? I think that's someone else's segment. You know what really gets under my skin is you go to a restaurant. This burger looks amazing on the menu. Right? Mm -hmm. It has all these fixings. And yeah. whatever. You're in this hankering. Mm -hmm. You order it, and you get it, and it's a f clearly a frozen, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this tiny Costco patty. Yeah, no. I just I can't. These ones we're talking about, they're they're, hand they're juicy. They're proper, oh yeah, yeah, with bacon and oh yeah, all the good stuff. So uh, I think I need to come up there. And you do, yeah. You do. We have yeah. some good, we have some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. just supervise and eat a burger. It sounds yeah. like. 
No. Well, you could ride our world's fastest snow bike too. So. I, I would be the dummy yeah. if you need a driver. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, one of the uh, our local manager of our local O'Reilly store wants to. He, every time we see him, he's like, "If you guys need a crash test dummy, I'm your man." That is awesome. Every time he's that like, is awesome. he's, he actually. Oh, this is a cool story. So. We built this Honda Odyssey, not the minivan, the old ATV thing. I don't okay. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For people who don't know, it's the, the, with the, the Nintendo yeah, con- with the yeah, steering like wheel. In yeah. the 80s, they made these little, long before side by sides. It was a single seater ATV with a roll cage. You're sitting down in it with a little steering wheel with brakes, all the all hand controls. So we took like the world's worst one of those and made it pretty darn good. And we put a 800 cc two stroke snowmobile engine in there, gave it a lot more power, and we're pretty sure that our O'Reilly. Uh, manager of our local store, he owned that as a kid. That specific one. Wow. It's not a hundred percent because really, yeah. who knows? But like. But he rolled it over, and even before I told him, he said, "Is there a dent in the roof lid, like right on the left side?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I mean, there's not too many of them in our <laughs> okay, area. Well, that, that's, so <laughs> that's pretty convincing. Yeah. So like many other people had it after he did, and it got like chopped in half and lengthened with like plumbing pipe and the world's worst welds, and then we got it and made it better. And but anyway, we had him up. After we got it finished, he came up and took it for a rip around the yard, and so that was that was really cool. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that's gonna do it. You guys yeah. good? Yeah, we're yeah. good. Yeah, that right. was a that was a good time. Yeah. Next time you do a will it drive home series, start in Sandpoint, Idaho, or come through. You know, if you're anywhere near <laughs> Idaho, Washington, Montana, BC, Canada, anywhere in that region, let us know. I would love to if I want to work in a shed lined with cardboard with a hey, wood fire. Hey, we're, we're going to be starting a new <laughs> we're going to be starting a new shop in the spring. It'll be much better. We'll have a lift. No, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. It sounds like you guys are into some shenanigans that I like to do as well as mm-hmm. hobbies. Yep. 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 So thanks to these guys for coming. If you haven't, please check out Grind Hard Plumbing Co. You can get them on YouTube. I'm assuming Face Space and Every, Insta Letter all and of all the, that stuff. All of those. Yeah. 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 Thanks for YouTube's joining. YouTube's the main one. But. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the conference. Appreciate you guys coming down. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll see you guys soon.